Joining me now are three MPs from the different parties. Arif Arani is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice and Liberal MP for the Toronto area riding of Parkdale High Park. James Cummings is a Conservative Economic Recovery Critic. He's the MP for Edmonton Centre. And Peter Julian is the NDP House Leader and Finance Critic. He's the MP for New Westminster Burnaby. All three of you, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Good to You're be here. Time. Okay, Arif Rani, let's start with this. We heard the Prime Minister today making an announcement on the Canada-U.S. land border. It's going to remain closed for all but essential traffic for, the, for another month. But he says there will be announcements, details coming on Monday, about some loosening of restrictions for double vaccinated Canadians arriving in Canada. What do you say to Canadians who are saying that it's taking too long to come up with a system of vaccine certification? People getting very impatient. Well, I, what I'd say to Canadians is that uh, we appreciate their patience, uh, but I'd also say to Canadians that we're now actually in, we have a, a happy new problem, which is that the fact that the vaccine rollout is going faster than we originally thought. We originally said every Canadian would have access to a, a double dose by the end of September. It now looks like we will have 70 million vaccines on the ground by the end of July, which is staggering in terms of speeding it up by two months. But that obviously builds in a new set of problems new set of questions, which is simply that once you have a second dose vaccinated population or the majority of it second dose vaccinated, what does that mean in terms of movement, including movement across the border? But it also encouraged Canadians to think about the global nature of this pandemic. We take a lot of cues from what we're seeing in other parts of the world. We know that there have been some easing of restrictions in Britain, for example, and now because of the Delta variant taking hold in that country, they are retrenching and uh, coming back to a position where they're imposing more strict measures. So we're being cautious because we want this to be the final sort of set of measures. So we're taking a prudent approach with respect to the border. Okay, just briefly, one of the questions at the press conference was that the, the forecasts appear that Public Health uh, Agency of Canada said that a lot of the, one of the barometers is us, receive, us arriving at 75% first vaccination, 25% second vaccination, and there'll be a lot of reopening. A lot of people are saying we're going to arrive at that in within two weeks, and yet there seems to be no plan for widespread double vaccination certification until the fall. How do you respond to that? So I think there are things in the works in terms of sort of preparing sort of uh, best information and best practices for uh, the both documentation that relates to double vaccination, but also guidance and best practices as to what should be the best okay. model of behavior. And I think you're going to see that, and that's been telegraphed. We're making an announcement on Monday in that regard. We've also heard the Prime Minister say that for people who are double-dose vaccinated, the notion of the hotel-based quarantine will be removed from the equation for people who have been and can prove that they've been double-dose vaccinated. Okay, James Cummings, your reaction to what you heard and what you didn't hear today? Well, I, it's typical of what we've heard often from the government is that they're making an announcement on a Friday and details to follow. And, you know, that's frustrating. That's frustrating for Canadians. That's frustrating for businesses. They've had for over a month an expert panel making recommendations, and, and it's taken over a month for them to start to consider some of those recommendations. So, you know, listen, people want to get their lives back to normal. I understand that there's a flood of vac uh, uh, vaccines coming into the country, but again, uh, the government was slow out of the gate with vaccines, and that's why we've got this delayed program. The businesses that I talk to, they desperately want to see us get back to some sense of normalcy, and they like and they like some form of consistency. They like to see a plan, so they they can plan and they can start to bring their staff back. They can't just do it on overnight they need a little bit of planning and they would like to see this government put out a plan rather than an announcement on friday and details to come okay peter julian the ndp's take on this um, the government is saying that there's a lot of negotiations uh, harmonization to be done with provinces who have the provincial data banks of people who are vaccinated I, I think that's fair. I, I think at the same time, and we've been pushing uh, throughout this crisis, the government to act more promptly. We we are certainly behind our uh, our major allies in terms of having fully vaccinated Canadians. Uh, it is important to note that the there are variants out there, and so I, I think the prudence is important. I also think that the planning and making sure that the public is aware is equally important. And that's where the government seems to fall short often in terms of actually rolling things out and knowing, uh, letting Canadians know what the next steps are. So uh, I am hopeful that they will uh, provide further detail next week. That's important uh, for 
uh, a whole range of Canadians and, and certainly for border communities across the country. Okay, I want to move to another issue which came up. This has been a very busy uh, second last week of, of this sitting of Parliament, but uh, this, uh, well, yesterday on Thursday, the House voted to find the head of the Public Health Agency of Canada, Dr. Ian Stewart, in contempt of Parliament for not releasing documents to the Commons China Committee, the Commons uh, Canada China Committee, concerning the firing, firing of two Chinese scientists who breached security at the Winnipeg National Microbiology Laboratory. Mr. Stewart has been summoned to appear in the House of Commons before the bar of the House of Commons. Uh, Referani, is the Prime Minister going to allow and instruct or encourage uh, Mr. Ian Stewart, head of the Public Health Agency of Canada, to deliver those documents to Parliament? So thank you for the question. And I think what's important for Canadians to understand, particularly those people watching, is that the documents that the opposition have been seeking have been provided to something called NSICOP, the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians. That's made up of members from all different parties who have right. very high-level security clearance. Those documents have been provided in an unredacted format to those parliamentarians in, in that sensitive manner because national security is a sensitive issue. Uh, I'm not going to speak on behalf of uh, Mr. Stewart in terms of his actions at this point, but the notion of accountability to a, a set of parliamentarians has been achieved okay. by a full and transparent Okay, I'm going to interrupt you because, okay, Rifani, uh, just in the interest of saving time, though, I will cut to the chase. Um, uh, notwithstanding the National Security and Intelligence Committee, the Speaker of the House of Commons, Anthony Rota, a Liberal MP, uh, has ruled this week that that doesn't suffice, that the House of Commons specifically asks that these documents be given to the Canada-China Special Relations Committee, or uh, Relations Committee, that the uh, National Security and Intelligence Committee does not constitute what was asked for by an order of Parliament. Are you saying that the Prime Minister and the government should instruct Mr. Stewart not to abide by the order of the Speaker and the House of Commons? I'm not purporting to give instructions to Mr. Stewart or to the Public Health Agency of Canada. What I'm indicating is that what I think your viewers need to understand is that this has been turned into a sort of crass and very partisan political game when you have members of the official opposition declaring that they're going to resign from the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians because they simply don't deem that sufficient. I think that demonstrates quite amply that materials have been provided in an unredacted format, providing the transparency that needs to be provided to all parties of, this, of the House of Commons. And that is not sufficient because of the political objectives of the official opposition at this stage when they believe we are heading into a summer just prior to an election. Okay, James Cummings, how do you respond to that? That has been the accusation from the government uh, for the duration, and that is that the, the National uh, Security and Intelligence Committee is a committee made up of dealing with top secret documents. Uh, at committee today, uh, Dr. Ian Stewart was saying that he's concerned that these are classified documents, um, that the, the documents have been delivered to that committee, and what's wrong with that committee? Well, let's deal with the facts, that that's a committee that reports to the Prime Minister. It doesn't report to Parliament. So that's a fact. The other fact is the way the motion reads is that the documents were to be provided and the clerk would have the opportunity to redact anything that he, he thought that there'd be a security issue with. And I, and I think the clerk's perfectly competent to do that. You know, this is an order of Parliament. This is an order from the Speaker. And the government should fulfill that. And I, I have confidence in the clerk that anything that would be a security issue would be redacted. And we can get on with this. They should provide the documents. Okay. I don't know what they have to hide. And I, I have no understanding of why they won't uh, uh, comply with the order. Okay, a last question. Peter Julian, it's been suggested that if Mr. Stewart doesn't provide these documents, if the government does not encourage him to provide these documents, if they're not forthcoming, then the next step logically, would be another motion to find the government in contempt of parliament, and that would be a confidence motion. Because in this motion, you didn't mention the, 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 the Minister of Health. Uh, if it ramps up to that, your party has said you don't want to help this government go to an election. You don't want to help this government defeat itself. Where do you go if the government refuses to deliver these documents, given that the next logical step would be to find the government, the minister and the prime minister, in contempt of parliament, and that would be a confidence vote? Well, I, I think when we look at the liberal spin, where they, where they try to say that um, everybody else is being partisan, the speaker, I imagine, they're, they're accusing of being partisan for having ruled on the contempt motion. I, they're certainly accusing all of the members of parliament, a vast majority of members of parliament, who all voted in, in favor of the, of the contempt contempt motion. I mean, th this is a fundamental question of parliamentary rights. This is why we live in a democracy. 
Right. And it's surprising to me that liberals are not uh, defending that. And, and, and it's unclear at this point to what extent the liberals actually, the liberal government gave direction. Okay, but I guess in a word, the question now comes down to, it does come down to, uh, we're almost out of time, but does it come down to, will this go to a vote of confidence then? Uh, well, we'll see what happens on Monday. The direction is very clear. It's very serious uh, for, for Mr. Stewart to violate the contempt order. Uh, it's very clear that the documents need to be provided, and it's obviously in the public interest to do so. Okay, so I want hopefully- to... Uh, cooler, cooler minds, less partisan minds than what we have in the prime minister's office will prevail. Okay. I want to thank all three of you. I know we're short on time, but I want to thank you. And obviously we will be watching this with great interest. Thank you very much, all three of you. You're thank welcome. You.